Welcome to Wings of Arrow Advanced Education and Research Organization. To know more, visit our official web page www.wingsofarrow.in. Hi guys, today we are going to see shear flow for thin walled closed section. So, first let's consider a cantilever beam of thin wall hollow rectangular cross section of breadth b and the height h and the thickness of the thin wall beam is d as shown in figure now a resultant shear force passes through the shear center such beams undergoes loading or a bending without twisting the shear flow analysis for the closed section beam is slightly more complicated than that for the open section. Here in this derivation our main motto is to determine the shear flow for this closed section. To find the shear flow for an open section variation starting from a free edge where the shear flow that is Q equal to 0 but whereas in closed section beams there is no free edge so such problem becomes an indeterminate structure how to find a shear flow distribution for closed section to get it is a bending moment problem not the bending twist problem because in this rectangular cross section the shear load is acting on the shear center so there is no twist only bending so in such kind of problem we can solve by the that shear flow distribution for a closed section is equal to the preliminary shear flow for an open section Q is added to the constant shear flow of unknown magnitude Q0. To start the analysis assume the shear flow is zero at any arbitrary point. This implies that the section has been cut longitudinally at any point. As you can see, I have assumed that cut near the point A. So, due to that, creating a free edge that is Q equal to 0. Now, the preliminary shear flow for open section Q, we know that Vy by Ixx integral of Yt ds. Now implementing this formula in QAB. So in QAB, the edge AB, it is here and this is very thin wall so we are ignoring the thickness. Now what is this Y? y is the displacement that is how far this a point is away from it from the centroid point so we can say the centroid this is downward of the centroid is considered as negative and upward of the centroid it considered as positive now at this a b point the y point is varying so which point to consider so we'll take as any rough point any section as xx that particular point is s from the free end that is from here to here is s from there we can find that from the centroid to that particular s point what is the distance minus of h by 2 minus s so substituting here in place of y that is minus h by 2 minus of s and after integrating we get as minus vt by 2i open the bracket hs by 2 minus s square by 2 name this as equation number 2 that is shear flow about this a b equation now at the point a we are starting from the point a so displacement will be 0 s equal to 0 so when we are substituting this s equal to 0 in equation 2 we get as q a equals to 0 Similarly, at the point B, S equals to H and when we substitute in the equation 2, we get as Q, B, that is shear flow at the point B, we get as 0. Similarly, at the point E, 
s equals to h by 2 that is along the line of axis so when we substitute in the equation 2 we get as q e equals to v t h square by 4 i similarly we are going to find the shear flow for open section at q b c so q b c applying that q b c equals to q b plus v by i integral y t d s now we know that from previously the q b value is 0 so 0 plus of that value here the b c as is given here this b c how much far from y both this edge is h by 2 its upward direction upward from the centroid so the y value is h by 2 for this bc section substituting the value in the above equation we get and after integration 0 to s we get as vht s by 2y we name this equation 3 now at the point b s equal to 0 substituting the s equal to 0 in equation 3 we get as q b equal to 0 at the point c s equal to b now substituting the s equal to b in equation 3 we get as q c equals to v h t b by 2 i similarly at the point f where the s value is b by 2 we get as q f equals to v t h b by 4 i now it's time to find for c d the shear flow for the section c d now this is equation q c d equals to q c plus v by i integral of y t d s now applying the value of q c from the previous equation v h t b by 2 i plus v by i integral of 0 to s h by 2 minus s here this c d the y value will be h by 2 h by 2 minus s so integrating we get as equation 4 now at the point c s equal to 0 applying the s equal to 0 in equation 4 we get as q c equals to 4 h t b by 2 i similarly at the point d s equals to h at the point 4 substituting the value in the equation 4 we get as q d equals to v h t b by 2 i similarly at the point g s equals to h by 2 substituting the value we get that v h t b by 2 i plus v h square t by 8 i similarly shear flow for open section q d a now we know the formula q d a equals to q d plus v by i integral y t d s applying the value of q d and we get integrating it and this d a the y value of d a is minus h by 2 so applying that value and integrating it we get as equation 5 now at the point d s equal to 0 applying that value s equal to 0 in equation 5 we get as q d equals to v h t b by 2 i similarly at the point a s equals to b that is q a equals to 0 applying the value s equal to b will get as q equal to 0 and at the point h s equals to b by 2 again substituting the value in the equation 5 you get as q h equals to v t h b by 4 i now recalling the equation 1 that is q c equals to q 0 plus q then we can write as q c of a b equals to q 0 plus q a b now applying all the previous values in this equation and we get as a new equation for an shear flow for an closed section as 6, 7, 8 and 9 for the members AB, BC, CD and DA respectively. To find the value of Q0 setting the angle of twist to 0 or the angle of twist per unit length as 0 because at the point shear center is a point where there is no twist so if there is no twist the angle of twist will also be 0 so we can write that beta equals to theta by L equals to QC by 2 AG close integral of DS by T 
now here beta equals to 0 so we can write that 0 equals to close integral of qc into ds now what is ds ds can i write from the this equation we have four members ab bc cd and da respectively so applying that value over here in qc ab qc of bc qc of cd qc of da from the equation 6 7 8 and 9 so applying the value with the limits in ab we are putting the limits 0 to h because we can see in the figure it is ranging from h the the height of the member is h in case of bc in bc we have a breadth that is which is ranging from 0 to b similarly similarly in cd it is ranging from again 0 to h and in case of da it is ranging from 0 to b because we are using the breadth so using the limit and applying the value in this equation and after that integrating we get this now after achieving this we let's simplify and cancel of the common terms let's simplify and cancel of the common terms we get as q0 equals to minus vthb by 4i now let's apply that q0 value in this qc of ab equation and again apply the limits at the point a b and e we get as displayed in your screen so from this we got the value at the point a vthb by 4i and at the point b we got minus vthb by 4i both have same magnitude and at the point e we have one more extra magnitude that is vth square by 8i which represents it is in parabolic in nature so we can draw the curve or a shear flow distribution along the ab as shown in your figure similarly at the qc of bc after applying the value of q0 let's apply the limits at the point b s equal to 0 at the point c s equal to b and at the point f s equals to b by 2 we get the value and from this value we can say after applying on this beam we get like this because at the point f the shear flow is zero next comes at the point qc of cd applying the value of q0 we get the equation and after that applying the limits we get as qc qd almost same magnitude and qg we have another additional term so that is vh squared t by 8i so if we can draw the shear flow diagram like this similarly for the da applying the value of q0 we get this equation and at the limits d equals to at point d s equal to 0 at the point a s equal to b and at the point h s equal to b by 2 and we get this and from there we can draw the shear flow diagram like this keeping the point that here as a given diagram the shear flow the shear force is acting vertically upwards so we have to keep in mind that along this wedge this should also will move vertically upward and here this point is zero so it will move from zero and will end here again from zero it will be continuous toward this side one more thing considering that we have this side all in Though this magnitude are same, but their directions are different. Keep that in mind. This is a negative and this value is in positive. This is a complete shear flow diagram for a closed section. Thank you for watching this video. If you have further inquiry or requested video, drop down to our mail wingsofarrow at the rate gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates. 
for the time being take care stay blessed inspired and fly high